Welcome back to my garage. Today I'm going to show you how to check and true your two stroke crank. I did a video on this subject about a year ago. I feel it's a bit long. There's a few things I wanted to add. And also I think I've gotten a bit better at this video making thing now. So here it goes. Tools you need. A stand. Check out my easy, cheap, do-it-yourself video on that one. Link in the description. Just two pieces of uh, square tubing and I've cut some V's in them. That's all you need. It needs to be rigid. A dial indicator. A copper hammer or other soft hammer. This is actually brass. A wedge. A soft wedge. This is made of aluminium. Or preferably a tiny screw jack. This is just made of a cut bolt and a nut. There's a few ways your crank can be out of true. can be spread like this. The crank webs are wider here than here. It can be pinched like this. The crank webs are wider here at the big end than here at the counterweight. They can be twisted. So one of the crank webs are further are twisted on the big end pin like this or the other way. And there can be a combination of all of them. You can also have it uh, where the crank is parallel. So the webs are parallel, but it's Kind of skewed on the crank pin and you can have spreading or pinching 90 degrees or any other amount of degrees between the counterweight and the big end pin so it's kind of wider here than here and maybe here and yeah you get me with persistence and patience you will get there place your crank in the stand put the indicator far out on one side of the axle by rotating the crank slowly and seeing when the indicator reads high or low, you can interpret that and know how your crank is out of true and then fix it. So it's pretty obvious what will happen if the crank webs are spread, because then your axles will tip up when the counterweight is in on the bottom. So you will read the highest when the big end pin or conrod is on top. If it's pinched, it will read the highest when the big end is on the bottom and the axles are tilted up like this. What's not so obvious is what happens when the crank is twisted. That's when the visualizing tool comes in handy. Now it's running true and both axles are running as true as you can get it with something like this. I will introduce a little twist. So now it's twisted. This crank web is closer than this crank web when the conrod is on top. And as you can see, it reads the highest when the conrod is close and lowest when the conrod is far away. So the right side here is highest with the conrod close, highest, and lowest with the conrod far away. If I twist it the other way, it becomes opposite. Now it's highest with the conrod far away, lowest with the conrod close. If your crank webs are spread, so this part of the webs are wider than this part up at the conrod. You will have to pinch the vise here carefully in a vise. If it's the other way around and it's wider at the conrod than at the counterweight, you can use a small screw jack like this if your crank is wide enough. Mine isn't. If not, you can use a wedge like this and drive it in between the webs carefully. If it's twisted and this side, the right side, is reading the highest on your indicator when the conrod is furthest away from you, you will have to hit the left crank web here. Highest when the conrod is far from you, hit the left crank web here because this web is closer than this web. If the right side reads the highest on the dial indicator when the conrod is closest to you, you will have to hit this crank web here, because that crank web is closer to you than that crank web. If you can't seem to get rid of the twist, even if you're hammering on the right side and on the right place of the crank webs, your crank might be skewed. Try hitting it with a hammer about here 
on either side, see what helps, or try pinching it 90 degrees from the con rod and see if that helps, because it can be pinched or spread this way. When one side is good, this obviously isn't, we'll get to that. Move the indicator to the other side. One side being true does not automatically mean the other side is true. Though counterintuitive, this is the case. So flip it around and true both sides. You might have to do this a few times, but you will get there. Okay, enough talk. Let's see if we can find out what's going on with this crank and fix it. So I'm slowly rotating it and I'm seeing where I get the highest reading or the lowest. So that's about, that's the low spot. I'll zero it there just to make it easier to follow. And I'll rotate it and now it's reading the highest almost on top and it starts falling again. So when the con rod is about opposite of the indicator it reads the lowest and when the con rod is about in line with the indicator it reads the highest. The indicator reads highest, so this side is highest when the con rod is on top and this means that the axles are standing like this and the crank webs are spread. I will have to pinch it in the vise. Carefully. So we're still reading the lowest with the con rod on the bottom and the highest with the con rod on top. We need to pinch it a little more. Still the same, I'll have to pinch it a bit harder. Still high with the con rod on top, still low with the con rod on the bottom. Let's pinch it some more. So now we're reading lowest with the con rod closest and highest with the con rod furthest away. This means we will have to hit the left crank web here. So the con rod is furthest away when the right side is reading highest. Hit left crank web here. Highest with the con rod far away, still. Let's whack on it some more. Still reading high with the con rod far away and low with the con rod close. We'll need to hit it some more. Still high with the con rod far away. Very good press fit on this uh, stock SPX crank. Still high. Hit it harder. Maybe a little bit better. Hit it some more. Choose a softer hammer than what I've done because I can see now that I'm deforming the crank where I'm hitting it. Also, it's better to hit here than at the thin section here. Okay, so now I've gotten a bit over eager it seems and now it's reading much lower on this side and much higher on this side. So now as it is the highest with the con rod close, I will have to hit this crank web here. Right side reads highest with the con rod closest to you. Hit this crank web here. Right crank web here. High with con rod close, low with con rod far away. Okay, so now it's highest with the con rod on bottom. And this means I have pinched the webs a little bit. I will have to use the wedge. So we're still lowest with the con rod around top and highest with the con rod on the bottom. About on the bottom. More wedge action. So now there's a little bit of twist, a little bit of twist, and it's highest with the con rod close. This means we'll have to hit this web a little bit more. High 
highest with the coin rod on the bottom. Pinch it again. Okay, now we are between one and two hundredths of a millimeter true. Since this dial indicator is accurate down to two hundredths of a millimeter, there's really no point at going any further now. Okay, that's it. I got it in the end, and you will too, but you will need to have some patience and persistence. You will get there. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.